Pathmunk is the intelligent tool for website lead generation. With increasing online competition, over 98% of website visitors don't convert. The ability to successfully show your value proposition and support visitors in their buying journey separates you from the competition online. Pathmunk qualifies and converts leads on your website by figuring out where they are in the buying journey and influencing them in key decision moments with relevant micro experiences like case studies, intro videos, and much more. Stay relevant to your visitors and increase conversions by 50%. Add Pathmunk to your website in seconds. Let the AI do all the work and get access to 50% more qualified leads while you keep doing marketing and sales as usual. Check us on pathmonk.com. Welcome to today's episode. Let's talk about today's guest. We have Shurong Lee from Tokeny, head of marketing with them. How are you doing today, Shurong? Very good. Thanks for having me um, today. And uh, I'm excited to share some insights from my side. Definitely. Uh, and well, I'm sure uh, our listeners are tuning in, wondering what Tokeny is all about. So uh, Shurong, in your own words, tell us a little bit more. Yeah, sure. So Tokeny, uh, we are providing an enterprise-grade tokenization platform for financial institutions to issue, transfer, and distribute to securities um, easily on blockchain. So in other words, to help audience uh, here to understand, think of us as Shopify um, that is providing uh, easy-to-launch um, platform for financial institutions to launch their online shops. But the products, instead of goodies or um, some kind of clothes, they are financial products. So that people from everywhere, if they're eligible, they will be able to have an e-commerce experience to invest those kind of assets anywhere and uh, very smoothly digitally. Definitely. Okay. All, all awesome to hear that. And so that way our listeners who are tuned in could get a good understanding there of, of tokeny. What would you say is then is that key problem that you guys like to solve for clients? Um, so our target is uh, fi- uh, private markets. And so in the capital markets, you have private one and private uh, private one. And what we're focusing on is uh, the private markets. So in this market, it refers to the, the kind of assets you cannot really find in a public markets, like in stock exchange. Those are assets, for example, as private equity. So companies who wanted to raise funds through those kind of uh, instruments or private debt is also another kind of ways company can raise funds from. And those kind of assets are really hard to find. So, or, and also very hard to verify. So that people normally uh, leverage fund managers. So a fund would then do their research and find the best companies to invest in those kinds of instruments. And then you invest in shares of a fund. So those can be the most common way that we see how people interact with these private markets. Then we talk about problems. <laughs> so in private market, unlike in public markets, you just need to open your account and then you know if you wanted to buy a stock, Google stock share, and then you can easily buy it. Um, and then that is it. But for private markets, it's not like the case. In the normal process, maybe a shocking kind of knowledge is that in a lot of cases, the, the ownership of your shares are record in an Excel. And in a value chain, uh, there are different players. And all of those players have their different kind of Excel document to record the ownership of uh, the shareholders, whatever. And so in this whole process, you need to do data reconciliation to ensure that the data are the same from one party to another. Therefore, the whole process is really long. That is causing two problems or eventually three. So first the problem is it's not accessible for retail investors. And the second problem is that is really inefficient. inefficient. Uh, even though you can find a fund to buy and you find a private equity to buy, the whole process would take you a longer time, uh, up to weeks or even two months. And another problem is it's really expensive to invest in those kind of uh, private instruments. So that it's just make it hard for retail investors to participate into those kind of assets. And then because of the inefficiency where the process take a long time to just uh, buy uh, the kind of uh, uh, assets 
And then it's really hard to sell as well, because when you find uh, wanted to find another buyer to buy and the whole process need to re recall again <laughs> to just make a transaction of uh, selling uh, uh, your uh, Ernesto, your uh, fund, the share of fund to me, it takes maybe weeks until uh, from the day we're great to to make the trade. So the liquidity is a huge problem here we have. And this is where blockchain comes into play. And essentially, thinking the way that it's a bit like instead of having you, me, her, uh, or him, different parties using separated Excel document, we now have a shared Google Excel, let's say. <laughs> and blockchain acting in this role because uh, it's kind of providing immutable and a shared infrastructure to record those kind of ownership. Therefore, that different partners in the past have to uh, reconcile, uh, reconcile the data, don't need to do that anymore. So everybody can just access to a platform uh, through tokeny like interfaces like tokeny to just click on different button to first qualify the investors and then allocate the securities to the investor's uh, account and that allow them to trade. So as a result on the, on the investor side, instead of uh, having to receive a lot of emails, calls, sending PDFs here and there, there is a unified uh, system, uh, platform for the investor to log in, similar to your e-banking experience, where you open an account, you fill out your information, and then you have to pass some kind of KYC. So sending your password, uh, document and then there's kind of liveness check to ensure you are the person who uses uh, uh, identity kind of a document. And then after the qualification part, then you will be able to purchase different financial products online directly. So just by clicking the button and then you will be receiving your uh, kind of private assets you cannot have before. And then on top of that, because of programmability that blockchain provides, it can also automate the everything that uh, the kind of uh, asset managers had to have to do. And so they can automate the whole process. So used to be the manual paper-based process suddenly become automated from weeks to minutes or even two seconds. They just need to click here and there and the action could happen. So therefore they will be able to really open the door for retail investors to make a smaller kind of investment requirement from 10,000K, 50,000K down to a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, so that the retail investor like you and me will be able to participate into those kind of opportunity, just like going to Amazon to buy a product. Now you can do the same for buying different assets you are not able to access. Yeah, interesting. Um, and so then, how would somebody then usually find out about Tokeny? Is there a, a top client acquisition channel for you guys? Um, so we have maybe three kind of uh, main channels. First is obviously word of mouth referrals, uh, where our partners, clients, and users, they, they mention about us. And so we get more clients like that. But the second one is, is through digital channels. So uh, organic search, social media, and also forwarding of an, our newsletter, for example, as well, paid advertisement and so on. And the last uh, channel is event. So we also attend different events and then gaining more visibility and also connect with people. Then the word of mouth, in fact, would continue going on. Okay, awesome to see that. Um, and, and so that way our listeners who, who are tuned in today can visit you. Uh, they could always check you out at togany.com. What exactly. does the website play for client acquisition? It is our main channel. Um, so that uh, normally, w no matter where they come from, the word of mouth or uh, the digital advertisement or social media, they all have been drive into our website. And then they will be able to see a lot of resources in our website. Uh, so we've been building a lot of content since the beginning and we're the, the leader of the industry and uh, one of the first uh, kind of company who provides such services. So over the past six years, uh, we've been building and being the salt leader to help and educate the whole market 
to understand why they should use, why it's beneficial for them and how to use it. And so when they land at our platform, they will be able to find uh, different resources and quickly they will be able to have a good takeaway and a learning process about uh, tokenization and uh, Web3 for TradeFi, uh, traditional financial players. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, awesome, awesome to hear that. Um, and is there then any tools or tips or methods that you would recommend to your listeners, Shirang, as far as some website lead generation? Um, the tools that uh, not, now we're using just a really straightforward, we have a CMS system we're using. And then, so we just use the form from this CMS system to kind of uh, ensure we have all the leads generated, uh, the data in the one place. So we can uh, analyze easily where this data is coming from and then which channel convert more um, audience and then into customers. So we can invest more in that channels and they improve in the unperformed uh, channels uh, accordingly. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Great, great, great to hear. That was some tips there for, for our listeners. And well, let's switch gears then a little bit, Shu Rong, and let's talk about you as a leader, you being the head of marketing there for Togany. What are some key tasks you like to focus on your day-to-day -day work? Um. So day-to-day -day work would be different from one day to another. But to summary, um, it's about uh, three different uh, paths. So one is about learning marketing sites. It means that every day I need to check a lot of information and to ensure that we're up to date on what, what's going on in the market. And then second would be the strategy part where I have to review the KPI performance, different marketing channels um, about uh, different campaigns working good or bad and uh, our planning as well is everything on track is something off and how can we solve those problems and then I have to translate them into tasks and assign to our teammates accordingly to ensure that we can uh, go to where we plan to go in a quarterly or in a yearly basis and lastly it's about ex uh, execution as well because as a startup, uh, you tend to do different things and not only focus on uh, strategy as uh, head of marketing, you also have to get your hand dirty, <laughs> meaning that I still need to do a lot of uh, content creation and also involved, uh, involved directly to project management to ensure that, for example, uh, redo the uh, website and uh, demo video redo and uh, writing content like reports ebook, blog articles, and, and also providing insights for newsletters as well, and to ensure that we have uh, a really uh, great branding and messaging and uh, also positioning in the market going forward. That's yeah, okay. awesome, awesome to show that. Uh, and so, I mean, you do have your, your day, you know, uh, busy there, but in the between times, how do you stay up to date with all the news in the marketing world as far as some strategies, news, trends? Is there a preferred channel that you like to go with? Absolutely. <clears throat> so I use LinkedIn mostly to really keep track what is happening by connecting with the relevant people. And uh, even for those who have really good thoughts, good insights, I even make the notification as you can do for any kind of a person you want to follow or connect it so that I'm sure that if there is a big news and uh, valuable news, I will not be missing out. So that's the way I've, I'm doing it. I've been doing it. And uh, my team also share different insights and uh, into the channel on Slack. So we will share with each other and also discuss over there as well. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Um, and well, let's jump into our next section then here, Shu Rong, which is our rapid fire question rounds. Are you ready for them? Yeah, sure. All right, perfect. Then first off, Shu Rong is what is the last book that you read? Um, I read um about Read Write Own um, by Chris Dexon. Um, and it is a ebook about blockchain and web three, how blockchain is going to be the future of internet, let's say, where um for kind of day-to-day -day life we're going to have. And because uh, I'm focused on uh, investment part, um, 
and to make sure in the future everybody have access to those kind of assets they were not being able to access. So it's a similar kind of uh, book, and uh, he explains very well and clearly about what it is and what's the future hold. Okay, perfect, awesome. Um, next up then is. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be that one thing that you want to have fixed for your role as a marketer today? Um, I would have wanted to have a unified dashboard for marketing data. Um, it has been a bit uh, hard to grab data from one, two, three, or even four different platforms and unify them to one place. So sometimes I still need to do, for example, a one report. I have to go to different places and uh, that is time consuming. And I wanted to have just one screenshot. I have every data I need. And then I just need to, on top of that, to analyze the data and to give a uh, proposed different strategy and uh, task kind of uh, assignment so that we can do better of our job and receiving time from doing this kind of uh, a manual process. Definitely. Okay. Awesome. Awesome to, uh, uh, to hear that. Uh, next then is if there's one repetitive task that you could automate, what would that be? Well, um, that would be maybe publishing content on all platforms with one click. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. I we we have some kind of a tools, but uh, it is more about you know when we have newsletter, for example, we first to send over to our audience through email. And then we need to publish it on our website. And then we need to distribute it into uh, to our social media channels as well. And all of those processes are repetitive. And of course, it's not me doing it, but uh, my whole team, they have to repeatedly doing this. And I think if there's a tool to help just doing that in one click, that would be really awesome. Okay, perfect. Awesome. I lo lo love that. Uh, next uh, is, I mean, you have, you know, you started as, as, as an engineer, right? But you moved on into the marketing world and you have lots of experience already. What is that one piece of advice that you would give yourself if you were to restart your journey as a marketer today? Yeah. So for this, I would want, want to be the earlier myself to write content earlier uh, directly at the beginning of my career. Because I started my um, career as an intern, actually. When I joined six years ago to Tokeny, uh, I actually transferred myself from an engineer to a business side of person by, took a, uh, by taking the master degree class in France. And then at the end of my study, I uh, joined Tokeny as an intern and then become an official marketer at uh, Tokeny as a first marketer, actually. So at that time, I had to uh, focus on something more simplified and to execute. And until a few years, uh, maybe one years later, I started to write content. And then that really make a huge changes and to make me have in-depth knowledge about uh, my industry and uh, what we're doing. And uh, that it has been a game changer for me. I would have wanted to do it earlier. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Some great advice there uh, for, for everybody that's tuning in. And well, Shira, we are coming to the end of the show here. But before we do end, I do want to give you the last word. So say someone forgets everything about the interview, t interview today. What is that one thing they should remember about Togany? Um, So think of us as a no-code platform to help you to upgrade from Web 2 to Web 3. Whether you guys heard it, you can check them out at com. <laughs> the Compliance Infrastructure for Digital Assets. Shirong, thank you so much for being on with us today. To our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm looking forward to our next episode at Pathmonk Presents. Thanks a lot, Shirong. Thank you very much. Have a good day.